Welcome to the Fit Dad Nation podcast, forging strong fathers and raising a stronger generation. It's time to get up or shut up with your host, Steve Roy. Hey guys, Steve Roy here, host of the Fit Dad Nation podcast. Welcome to the show. Thanks for listening. So if I sound a little bit hoarse, I'm a little bit under the weather, seem to have picked up a cold or, or something like that. So don't mind me if I'm sniffling and or coughing. Anyway, I appreciate you checking in here. I haven't been all that consistent with my episodes. A lot of reasons for that. But what I want to share today uh, is just some progress here. And I really think that um, just some of the, th- the some of the takeaways today, things that I'm going through personally, will help you on your own journey. So I think I shared this maybe the last show or the show before that. Um, after I got injured, I hurt my foot pretty badly. Um, and sidelined from uh, pickleball, which I was playing a ton of, kind of fell into, uh, I would say, a bit of a depression, and just let myself really just go. I mean, I was eating like shit, drinking soda, uh, popping energy drinks, eating fast food all the time, ballooned up to over 200 pounds, which for me is a lot. Um, Walk around, weight for me, uh, 175 to 180 is is a good weight, so 20, 25 pounds of fat, and I felt horrible, slept horrible, had terrible energy, terrible heartburn. In in March 1st, which was, um, I'm recording this on the 22nd of March, so 21, 22 days ago, I started a challenge in the Inner Circle, which is our private membership program called the One Day Better Challenge with the idea of getting one day better. So we do challenges every month, all kinds of different stuff to keep guys engaged, active. And uh, so this one was, all right, guys, let's get back out of our shells. For those of you that have taken some time off, this is a way to transition back into a healthier lifestyle. And we did just a couple things. We're <clears throat> working out every day, 10 to 15 minutes a day. That was That's it. We're taking cold showers to get out of our comfort zone. We're getting up early to get more shit done. And we're just following a, um, a no fast food and soda rule as a diet and not a particular diet. So just those four things uh, every day. And so far, it's been hit or miss. A lot of guys are doing pretty well. Uh, A few guys are not. But for myself, and I can only really speak for myself as far as the true results, I feel, other than obviously catching a cold, I think I caught it from my daughter, I feel amazing. So three weeks into it, no fast food, which is huge. No soda, which is huge. And daily exercise. So I had stopped working out for like six weeks because of my foot. And I was using that as an excuse. And really why why this is important is just is the change in my own body, in my own mindset, and in my motivation. And the fact that I've, I would say I lost about five pounds or so. Started to see the muscles again that um, I, I used to have. Uh, and, you know, three weeks is not a long time. But when you really change just some some basic things you just be surprised at what can happen. So I want to just kind of uh, share my really overly simplistic mindset and approach to getting back into shape because as I've shared before, everybody except for a very, very, very select few um, are going to go ups and downs. They're going to have periods of time, even extended periods of time where they're out of shape. They're they're feeling fat. They're just their the priority is somewhere else. In the prior, when the priority comes off your health and goes somewhere else, the health falls apart. You start eating whatever you want. You start eating what's in front of you. You stop exercising. And yes, of course, you get fat. That's what happens for most of us. This is an extremely common thing. Happens, you know, to me. It's happened to me many, many times over the years. And just, you know, not long ago, as most recently. So I look at it like this. You know, I don't, I don't freak out. I don't. I don't look at it like, oh my God, I've got, I've got to get back into shape and I've got to change everything and I've got to do all these things. And it's so complicated. And I don't know if I can do it all. And, you know, it's easy to really get caught up in that and then talk yourself out of it and do nothing, right? Just overanalyzing. And then that leads to no a- action. So <clears throat> I posted something about this the other day um, in one of my groups. And I really just look at health and fitness, even myself with my clients, um, just from a very a macro view. Yes, of course, when you get into the nuts and bolts of, you know, training and really trying to <clears throat> reduce body fat, 
and hit a certain level or, or reach a certain specific goal. Um, yes, there's a lot of different nuances, calorie counting, um, <clears throat> manipulation of programming. There's a lot of stuff that can go into it, of course. But for most of us, the vast majority of guys who just really want to shed some body fat, they want to have more muscle, they want to be stronger, It'd be nice to see an ab or two, right? Uh, and want to have a lot more energy, you know, keep up with the wife, keep up with the kids. They want to be attractive to their spouses or significant others. And you want to live a higher quality of life. And you probably want to live a long, higher quality of life, right? Those are the things for the most part that we want. And yes, would it be amazing to have washboard abs? Sure. But the fact is, uh, the, the discipline and commitment it takes to get there and then maintain it, for most of us, 95% of us, just doesn't make sense. I mean, sure, it's cool to do it, but I don't I don't keep that fit because I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy sacrificing so much of the, f- the food that I love for the sake of seeing my abs. You know, 20 years ago, <clears throat> it was important. I'm 50 now. Uh, I want to be able to move well, and I want to be strong. And yeah, of course, I want to look good. I want to have some muscle, but I don't need to go to the extremes. And that's probably the case for a, a lot of guys listening to this. So I want you to look at my approach and see if this fits into your life. Um, Number one is, first thing I do is I tell myself I'm going to stop eating like an asshole, right? I've posted this before. Um, It's kind of funny, but it's true, right? You know when you're eating like an asshole. I mean, we all know when we're eating like an asshole. We just do. It's not that hard to differentiate eating a pretty healthy diet and eating whatever the fuck you want, whether it's pizzas or or uh, <clears throat> Burger King or whatever, right? I've said fuck it so many times over the years, and I just blow up like a balloon. I feel shitty and retain a lot of water. Um, all the things that are associated with eating like a high processed food diet, right? It's just not good. You don't feel good. Obviously, we know it's not healthy internally, but we just don't feel good doing it. So I just tell myself, I'm going to just stop eating the stuff I know that's hurting me. And I'm going to focus on the stuff that helps me. Now, you know, you can go a couple different ways with this. Um, There's no right or wrong way to eat. You know, there's a lot of people claiming that a vegetarian is great. A lot of people claim carnivore is great. You know, you just, you never know. It really is a personal preference and what works for you. If you hate vegetables, you know, paleo is going to be tough. If you like carbohydrates, which let's be honest, most of us do, ketogenic diet is going to be very tough. So find something that works for you. Um, I just, I'm a big meat eater, so I eat a lot of meat and eggs and fruits and vegetables. That's, you know, and then, you know, I like a little bit of starch in there. I like some rice. I like some potatoes. Um, but that's it. I keep it that simple. And and if I could just maintain that 80, 90% of the time, I notice that I feel a hell of a lot better, right? I do better when I'm not eating as many carbs, right? Maybe that's true for you. Maybe it's not. But in my experience, when you start bringing down some of those um, empty calories, the pastas, a lot of the whole grains, oatmeal, bread, stuff like that, that's just really nothing but carbohydrate and there's not a lot of nutrition to value in there and a lot of calories, when you take that out and you replace it with fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables, um, not that fruit is bad or anything like that. Don't worry about the sugar in fruit. It doesn't matter at all. You're going to notice that your energy is going to go way up after your initial drop and you're going to start shedding weight because that's a, an easy way to cut out 500, 800 calories a day just from changing a starch to a vegetable. It means that's that simple. So my rule number one is... Stop eating like an asshole. Right. <clears throat> Number two is I make strength training a priority. Now, I don't care what your goal is. If you want to lose a bunch of fat, if you want to gain a bunch of muscle, whatever, anywhere in between, does not matter. Your goal as a man in your 30s, 40s, or 50s, or even above is to add or at least keep your lean muscle tissue, extremely important. This is not going to happen unless you are strength training. You don't have to necessarily use heavy, heavy dumbbells or barbells, but it has to be some form of resistance training. So you're resisting uh, you know, your muscles so we can use bands, we can use 
Um, anything that's going to provide a resistance, even machines. You know, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of machines, but they do provide resistance. <clears throat> so this has to be a staple. Whatever program you're on, if you think that you want to lose a bunch of weight, and I hear this all the time, is, oh, I'm just going to do some more cardio. I'm going to go running a little bit more. I'm going to, I'm going to get lean. Well, you may burn some calories that way, but that's not a great way to shed body fat because the more muscle you have on your frame and know you will not get to be looking like Arnold is through strength training, progressive strength training, meaning progressively challenge yourself. It doesn't have to be every single workout, but you do have to progress just by a little, whether it's more reps, it's more weight, it's more time under tension, uh, whatever variable you're going to manipulate, it has to challenge you a little bit more to challenge your muscles, right? This is how we grow. This is how we grow muscles. This is called hypertrophy. And this is extremely important for us as middle-aged guys. So make sure this is at the forefront of your training. Three to four days a week is plenty. You can do full body workouts. If that works, you can split it up however you want, up or lower. You can do bro splits, you know, chest and shoulders, back and thighs, legs and uh, arm, whatever. You know, there's a million ways to slice it. There's no really wrong way to do it. <clears throat> but you have to just repeat, you know, make sure that you're training your muscles often enough and you're training them hard enough. Okay, you can't go in, check a few boxes, three sets of 10, boom, 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 done, move on. You have to make sure that you're actually pushing. You know, I'm not a huge fan of um, assigning a specific number to a specific exercise. You know, kind of the range that you want to shoot for is 8 to 12 for muscle growth. If you can do more than 12, add some add some <clears throat> weight. If you can do less, maybe it's a little bit too heavy if you can only get 6 or 7. So that's kind of a, a general range. If you stay in there, push yourself. Okay, you don't have to go crazy. I'm my strength training sessions last 40 minutes, somewhere in there, not that long. Okay, three to four days a week. That is my priority, and and I honestly believe that should be your priority as well. Next up, I just I move more. So I I do a lot of conditioning work, or I did before I got hurt, which just means a lot of kind of high intensity stuff, short duration, short rest periods. Get your heart rate way up. You know, burn a bunch of calories, and then let um, epoch do the rest, which, you know, you may have heard exercise post oxygen, excessive post oxygen consumption. That just basically means you're burning more calories at rest after up to whatever, 24, 36 hours after a very intense workout. <clears throat> that's the idea behind it. You raise your metabolism for an extended period of time. And so that's a great way to burn some more calories and, and kind of ramp things up for yourself. Is it necessary? You know, you don't have to do that. As long as you're doing your strength training three, four days a week, and then you're outside and you're just, you're getting some movement. And I mean, you don't have to be outside. I just use that as an example. But just move more. Make it a goal. And that's my goal as well is, is just to move more. We, you know, we're, um, you know, we're a bunch of sitters. Like we, it's killing us. You know, so many of us spend hours in our car at a, in front of a computer, sitting somewhere. Or even if we're at home working at home, we're sitting so much and developing all kinds of problems because of it. And just make it your goal to get up, get, walk, hike, bike, swim, go, whatever. But that's number three on my list. So I stop eating like an asshole. I make strength training my priority. And the third thing is, I just try to move as much as I can. Frequent walks work great, okay? Just get out, get moving, get your body moving. And seriously, you, you got to just do it as, as much as you can. And then <clears throat> lastly, you know, this isn't, you know, like I said, this isn't anything um, secret. This isn't anything. This is no special hack. This is a very simple thing, and that's what I teach, and that's what I, I do myself. And this is how I stay fit or in this case I'm going to go from 200 pounds to 180 is my goal in in a couple months and I'm going to do it because I'm just going to follow these four things right and that's all I really have to do and for honestly for most of you that's the, that's the same okay yes you're going to have to eat in a calorie deficit but you know following the don't eat like an asshole rule it is hard to overeat when you're cutting out the vast majority of useless calories that are just filling your diet and, and allowing you to overeat, right? That bag of pretzels and uh, French onion dip 
right? Which, which may be, you know, let's call it 500 calories at night. You replace that with a couple pieces of fruit or, or a piece of fruit and some vegetables, right? Which is, let's call it 50 to 100 calories, right? You can just save calories that way and you'll find that it's a lot easier to start losing weight when you do that. But lastly, it's something um, extremely important and I don't think we talk about it enough and that's I commit to something bigger than myself. I don't, um, I don't really believe in the try, let's go it alone, although so many of us are still in that mindset of I have to do this alone. It's all on me. I'm a man. I can do this. And yes, we want to be, you know, they call it the lone wolf mentality. And just, it's just been shown time and time again that it just doesn't work. Men thrive in tribes. I've learned this from a friend of mine, Larry Hagner, and we talk, we've talked about this multiple times. I had him on the show a while ago, and this is what he teaches in his courses and programs at the Dad Edge Alliance. Uh, great guy and great philosophy of this just doesn't, a lone wolf, lone wolf mentality does not work. So I put myself out there, right? I knew I was turning into a fat piece of shit, and I felt it. And instead of, you know, putting out fake news on Instagram and social media and saying, guys, I'm, you know, here's my picture from five years ago and look how ripped I am and blah, 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 right? Instead, you know, and, and it's maybe not quote unquote the right thing to do on social media because, you know, historically, you know, people really um, haven't wanted to see that. It's not inspiring, right? It's not motivating. David Goggins is motivating, right? He inspires you. But when you see a guy who's 50 years old that has let himself go, right? That's not, that's not that interesting. So it doesn't do well on social media and I get it. And I just don't give a shit. I've, I've come to truly, truly despise social media because it's such fucking fake bullshit. Everything's a snapshot of what, you know, people want you to see. And it's so much garbage. I honestly hate it. And I'm still actually trying to figure out a way to, to build my business without it. You know, it's hard, obviously having online business, Social media helps tremendously, which is why I'm still doing it, but it's bullshit. So I decided to share my struggles, my real life struggles of this is why I've fallen apart. This is my mindset. This is my mentality. And yeah, it's embarrassing, right? It's embarrassing because I teach this shit for a living, right? I shouldn't have, you know, in my mind, I shouldn't be going through these periods of time where I'm a mess emotionally and physically, right? I mean, a lot of these coaches you see online, they, you know, they don't go through these periods, right? They look good all the time. And it's just not the case. And it's not the case for me, but it's not the case for most of us. And I felt that it was really important to share that because guys can resonate with that because this is this is real life. This is what happens to us when shit gets heavy, when we start struggling in our marriages or we get a divorce or we're going through custody issues or we lose our job or we're broke and we're way behind in debt or the mortgage. Uh, there's so many reasons that we get sidetracked. You know, some kid gets sick, you know, a family member dies. So much, so many things are coming at us from, from different angles that you're going to get thrown off. You're going to go down. And it's nice to know that someone uh, who does this for a living and has for a very long time goes through the exact same shit. And, and gets into a bad place and has to dig himself out. And that's that's what I've done. So I put myself out there. I told myself um, that I was going to share everything with my guys in the groups. And that's what I did. And I actually got a lot of messages from guys saying, you know, I appreciate you sharing this. Um, I got another one last night about sharing um, some of the details of my personal life and the struggles. And, and it's really helped. And I found that just putting myself out there is a phenomenal accountability tool because now I know that there's a bunch of guys. I mean, I don't, I don't know how many thousands of, you know, followers and, and whatnot are on social media. A lot, um, guys are looking at me. And so when I put myself out there and I don't pretend to be something I'm not, then that's going to make me do the things that I've committed to when I really don't feel like it. And that's why it's important to you because if you can get into a group, you can get in, in with somebody or, or, or some people that care about you enough to hold you accountable, which is why uh, our inner circle group is so uh, effective is because the guys are there for each other and they hold each other accountable. You know, they care about one another. Yeah. So for you, do it. You're struggling with shit. 
you know, I can give you or anybody can give you a roadmap, you know, if you follow the basic things that I talked about today, that's a phenomenal, phenomenal start. And it's all you need really for, for, for the most part will get you a very long way just following these two things. But if you don't put yourself out there and you just try to do this yourself and you don't share this with anybody, it's going to be way too easy to disappear once shit gets hard and something gets in the way you miss a workout you have a binge episode and you go crazy at at kfc and then you just give up right because nobody knows nobody cares right so it's easy to just give up you put yourself out there with a group of guys or a group of whoever that cares and says hey man what's going on with you i haven't seen you in a couple days posting or i don't see you checking off the spreadsheet uh where we do our accountability stuff we know what happened to you Okay. Those are the things that are going to keep you in the game when you want to quit. So really important, guys, find that uh, way to make yourself accountable, whatever that looks like. You know, I'm happy to um, have you in the inner circle. If you want to talk about it, just shoot me an email or find me on social. I'll tell you more about it. But <clears throat> regardless, find a way to put yourself out there, whether it's just publicly saying, this is my goal. Maybe you have a side bet with one of your buddies, maybe your spouse. Just put something on the line and just find a way to, to get out, put it out there. <clears throat> it really is a game changer, right? I don't need any any supplements. I don't need any gadgets, gizmos, just a couple dumbbells, small space, the will to do it, and then knowing that some other people are watching what I'm doing is enough. And again, it's been 22 days. I feel amazing. Energy's way up. Strength is way up. Body's changing already, and again, it's, it's really literally just these four things I, I just shared, right? Nothing to sell you here, nothing to pitch you, no particular diet I'm, I'm shoving down your throat, no particular program. You know, there's a million different programs that can work. There's a million ways to eat that can work. Just number one, stop eating like an asshole. Number two, make sure you're doing your strength training three, four times a week. Number three, move as much as you can, and number four, Get yourself accountable. You have to be accountable to somebody. Okay? Follow those four things, guys, and I promise you will make progress. If you need specific help, I'm happy to do that. That's what we do in our groups. I've been coaching for, I guess, 25 years or so. Um, And so I'm happy to help. Shoot me a message. Shoot me an email, stevenfitdadnation.com. Find me on social at the Fit Dad Nation. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped, and I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks for joining us. And remember, if you want more information, check out the Fit Dad Basecamp group on Facebook. And don't forget to stop by fitdadnation.com. Until next time, keep kicking ass and taking the next step. You can do this, Dad.